When you think of the late 2000s, a handful of superstars usually come to mind. Kobe Bryant on his quest to win rings without Shaq, LeBron James in his peak Cleveland form, Dwayne Wade carrying Miami, Dwight Howard in his prime, and the Boston Celtics Big Three causing havoc in the Eastern Conference. But one player who's since been forgotten by many was the Portland Trailblazers' former star, Brandon Roy. Roy is yet another example of a star who had potential that reached the sky, but unfortunately, severe injuries ruined that potential and kept him from having a long and healthy career. Even though Roy's career was ultimately cut extremely short, many of us still got to witness his incredible talent on display, and I'm here to tell you about it. He was a 6'6 shooting guard who was selected with a 6th overall pick in the 2006 NBA Draft by the Minnesota Timberwolves. Although Minnesota selected him, Portland had the next pick and was hoping to draft Roy after he had an excellent pre-draft workout with the team. Due to this, Portland mustered up a trade package that included the rights to draft Randy Foy and Minnesota agreed to the deal, sending Brandon to the Blazers to begin his career. At this point, the Blazers organization was in desperate need of a spark, as they had missed the playoffs the previous few seasons and were coming off a year where they had the worst record in the entire league. Due to this, there was no time to develop Brandon slowly, as they were immediately plucking him into the starting lineup and giving him a full workload of minutes. He immediately made a strong first impression as he scored 20 points in his first game against his hometown team, the Seattle Supersonics. And in his second game, he poured in 19, 6, and 5 against the Golden State Warriors. He had a silky smooth game that didn't rely much on athleticism, but instead on his skills and fundamentals. I wouldn't describe him as explosive, but as methodical and intelligent. He had an elite handle on the basketball and had a lethal pull-up jumper. He also had a quick first step and was a fantastic finisher in the paint. To put it simply, he was an isolation nightmare for the opposing defender. At the end of his debut season, he had improved Portland's record by 11 wins over the previous season and was rewarded with a Rookie of the Year trophy. In his rookie campaign, he had a stat line average of 16.8 points, 4.4 rebounds, 4 assists, and 1.2 steals on 45.6% shooting. Beginning with his sophomore season, Roy's production, skills, and confidence would improve significantly, as he was named an NBA All-Star three seasons straight. At his regular season peak, he was averaging about 23 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists on 48% shooting, and a solid 37.7% from 3-point range. Not only that, but Roy was quickly establishing himself as one of the most clutch players in the entire league, as his elite one-on-one -on -one capabilities were consistently paying off in fourth quarter situations. This was especially the case in the 08-09 season, where he had numerous game winners and finished that season among the league leaders in fourth quarter shots made in one possession games. The most iconic of those was the sequence against the Rockets where he hit a tough jumper with only a few seconds left, which he then followed up with a deep three buzzer beater to win the contest. Throughout the regular season, he had numerous other evenings where he caught the attention of the basketball world, like on December 18th, where he dropped 52 points, 6 assists, and 5 rebounds against the contending Phoenix Suns, and also on January 24th against the Washington Wizards, where he achieved a franchise record 10 steals. Later in that postseason is where he truly displayed what he was capable of. It was the first round of the 2009 Western Conference playoffs against the Houston Rockets, and Roy was torching elite defenders like Ron Artest and Shane Battier. In Game 2, he dropped a monstrous 42 points and 7 rebounds on 55.6% shooting, leading his Blazers to a 4-point victory. On the series as a whole, he averaged 26.7 points, 4.8 rebounds, 1.3 steals, and 1.2 blocks on 46% shooting and 47% from 3-point range. As a player in his early 20s, this was the absolute peak of his powers, and the sky was the limit as he was rewarded with a max contract from the Blazers organization. Sadly, this was as good as it got as it was only downhill from this point on. In the 2010 season, Roy suffered his first major knee injury in the NBA as he suffered a bone contusion and a meniscus tear. Later on, it was discovered that Roy was missing a significant amount of cartilage in his knees, which required arthroscopic knee surgery on both knees. 
Unfortunately, even these surgeries weren't enough to save his career. Roy said that his knees had degenerated to such a point that there wasn't any cartilage between the bones in both of his knees. Due to this, he retired from the game of basketball at only the age of 26. A couple years later, he tried to make a comeback, but he only played a total of five games as a member of the Minnesota Timberwolves and made very minor contributions. Sadly, what ended the comeback was yet another injury to his right knee, which was initially only supposed to sideline him for a month. But the injury ultimately proved to be too severe, as it kept him out for several months before Minnesota was done waiting and decided to release him, which was unfortunately the final nail in the coffin of his career. Despite being done with basketball while still in his 20s, Roy kept a positive attitude and said this after his release. Anytime you walk away from the game, you have what ifs. I feel like I was able to answer those questions last year by going out there and giving it a try. At his peak, Roy was one of the most dangerous players in the game, and even the legendary Kobe Bryant agreed, as he stated in 2010, that Roy was the hardest player to guard in the Western Conference, and he had no weaknesses in his game. So now it's your turn. How good do you think Brandon Roy could have been if the knee injuries hadn't taken place? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more basketball content, and I'll see you guys in the next video.